Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today's video is a collab with my good friend Chantel from Dolls Unboxed. She's an incredibly talented artist and her pirate turned out so stunning. I'll leave links to her video and socials below. You definitely don't want to miss it. This isn't exactly a mermaid collab, but it is technically still May and a little mermaid-y, so we're sneaking it in at the end of the month as our mermaid contribution. With introductions out of the way, let's jump right into the video. This doll was rerouted with my favorite viscose fibers. I love the natural effect viscose gives and it behaves similarly to human hair when it comes to styling. I will leave links down below for that as well in case anybody is interested. One of my favorite parts of collaborating is seeing the different interpretations of the same theme. This collab is a great example of that. Our dolls, based off of the same prompt, are completely different. I took quite a bit of inspiration from Pirates of the Caribbean's Tia Dalma, Anna Maria, and of course Jack Sparrow. I also watched the show Black Sails all throughout the making of this doll, so that was a heavy inspiration as well. I put my assistant Rue to work, very helpful.
Of course, I had to give a little nod to Jack Sparrow. After ruining many a face up with poorly placed eye shines, I finally learned to place them with my white watercolor pencil first. Then I go in with my white acrylic paint over the top when I'm happy with the placement. Taking a variety of different fabrics, some of which Chantel was kind enough to send me, I cut them into strips and then distressed them with my scissors. I didn't get this part filmed, but I just sewed them strip by strip onto a piece of faux leather, arranging them as I went along. For those of you new to my channel, I really struggle with sewing. Luckily for me, in this case, I was saved by an intentionally messy appearance. I really wanted her clothing to look tattered and weathered by life at sea. I really wish I could remember where I learned this, but somewhere along the way I heard that Rainbow High Shoes fit G3 Monster High dolls, and I found these fabulous Rainbow High boots on eBay. For the top, I just cut a strip of faux leather, hemmed the top edge, and tied it off in the back. I wanted to have the option to switch out the articulated hook I'll be making her with her hand, and so I used a G1 Draculaura hand for the hook. G1 hands unfortunately don't fit the G3 arms, so I used resin to make the ball large enough to fit into the G3 joint. The hook was far easier to make than I expected. I just took a jump ring and formed it into shape with my pliers. I was so happy that my craft hoarding finally paid off. I found these vials on sale at Michael's sometime back and realized that the tops of the vials look a lot like the prosthetic piece of some of the more ornate hooks I found pictures of online. I picked my favorite of the three and stole the top for the hook. The reason why I'm sacrificing a spare Draculaura hand is because I want her hook to be articulated. 
I cut the hand down to size and then heat up a piece of warbler to mold it around the joint, checking periodically that I haven't hindered the articulation. Once I've whittled it down to fit inside of the prosthetic piece, I reheat the warbler to adhere the two pieces together. I attach the hook with my Gorilla Super Glue Gel. I'm not doing anything too exciting with the hair. I'm just backcombing some pieces to make dreads, and I also added some braids here and there. I do have a dedicated video on dread rerouting, but fair warning, it's the first video I ever uploaded onto YouTube, so it's definitely not my best work. I knew that I wanted to do a half updo for her, so I rooted her hair all the way across in the area where I was going to section out the hair so she wouldn't have any visible bald spots. I wrap the hair with some thin wire and I'm using a pin to get the hair to lay more naturally. To make her dagger, I mix equal amounts of epoxy sculpt part A and B together and after flattening it out, I cut around my sketch to get the rough shape. I refine the shape a little bit during this stage, but most of the shaping is done with my Dremel tool after the epoxy sculpt has hardened, which takes about 24 hours. I rushed to get this painted, and because of that, I'm not super happy with the end result. It doesn't have the realism I was going for, but it'll suffice. With that complete, this pirate is done. Let's take a look at their final photos. That's a wrap on today's video. Don't forget to check out Chantal's video linked below. Their pirate turned out so amazing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did, and you might consider subscribing if you'd like to see more from me. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.